You are welcome to Transformation Time with the Samaritan Strategy. We appreciate your presence and for the fact that you've partnered with us all this time. Within the past weeks, we've been discussing Jesus, our model of growth and development. And so here we see Jesus growing in four, <clears throat> in four areas. When we read Luke 2.52. The Bible says, And Jesus grew in wisdom, in stature, in favor with God, and in favor with man. And we've seen this to be the wisdom growth of Jesus, the physical growth, the social growth, and the spiritual growth of Jesus Christ. And so this was expanded when we dealt with the topic, the church as a window. And we saw that God has given the church these four windows, the physical window, the social window, the window of wisdom, and the spiritual window to be exposed for people to know God's intentions for their future life and their present life. And so we saw that if all these four windows are opened to the public, to people, to the world, then God cannot be confined to only spiritual things. These four areas too are not separated. As far as they concern God, for me, they are all spiritual. But then Jesus' growth shows us that even in the spiritual, there is a physical growth in it. There is a social growth in it. And there is wisdom component. And that is the totality of the man Jesus we are discussing these days. Today we want to, we have dealt with uh, all this. Today we want to concentrate on the wheel of wisdom. That is the area of wisdom. Now, this is not the same as intellectual growth or mental stability. In short, biblical wisdom is knowing and doing what God commands. Biblical wisdom is God's instructions for living a carried out and carried out in all areas of life. For some people, whenever we talk of God's wisdom, they talk about it in terms of the mystery of God. Something that is hidden somewhere that particular people with spiritual inclination can go in there to harvest for people. But we know from what we have been studying that Jesus is the ultimate of God's wisdom, of God's mystery, of God incarnate. And so everything that God wants us to know is revealed in Christ. Although we might learn the wisdom of God through wise people or wise saying, the Bible is the ultimate source of God's wisdom for us today. It contains the instructions of God and obeying them helps us to live well. The Bible is God's revelation for how we live, for blessing and for our healing. Many products have operators manuals. That is instructions written by the product designers or manufacturers. The designers and manufacturers are best qualified to write the manuals. And as far as you follow and obey the manufacturer's manual, you can keep your product for long. They know how their products were made and how they should be used at all times or what is intended to be. God is our maker the creator of the universe. His written revelation, the Bible, is like an operator's manual for us in the world. Through scripture, he tells us how he designed us to operate or live in every area of life. And so, if we want to see the peace, progress, prosperity, if you want to live long 
if we want the best in this world that he has created, then we have to obey his instructions. Not just know it, not just read it, not just claim it, but obey it. Biblical wisdom is God's instructions for living. We achieve the blessed, balanced life God intended when we carefully follow his instructions for all areas of life. There are three primary relationships. We have the spiritual, the physical, and the social, out of which all other relationships come. Knowing and applying biblical wisdom in each of these relationships will move us towards God's intentions for our life. At creation, God gave us three primary relationships. God with the spiritual creation, which is physical, and people, which is social. God gives us specific instructions for each of these relationships. These scriptural instructions are known as biblical wisdom. Blessings and balance in life come from fulfilling God's instructions in all relationships. We move steadily towards God's intentions when we are in balance in our lives. Neglecting God's instructions bring destruction, poverty, hunger, wars, deprivations, acrimony, the diseases like the pandemic we are going through, an imbalance in one or more of our relationships also. Now, when you read Psalm 111, 101, Verse 10. The Bible says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All who follow his precepts have good understanding. To him belongs eternal praise. So this tells us the source of wisdom. The beginning. Even of that is the fear of the Lord. So if you don't fear God, you don't regard God, and you think you know it all in his creation, then it shows how we are deceiving ourselves. As people follow God's instructions, as the Bible says, they are blessed. So what are the three primary relationships that we are talking about? God gave us when he created the world. You can see this in Genesis 1. To 26a. What did the Bible say about that? There we see the relationship between man and God. And Genesis 2 verse 8 clearly also shows the relationship of man with creation. And Genesis 2 18 tells us the relationship between man and, I mean, with man. Now, I want to just briefly read some of these verses. Genesis 1 26 he says then God said let us make man in our image in our likeness that is man with God Genesis 2 8 says man with creation as I've said now the Lord God had planted a garden in the east of Eden and there he put the man he had formed so you see, God giving man a relationship with creation, with plants, with animals. And man was supposed to be a steward of his creation. And Genesis 2 verse 18 was the man with man. What does the Bible say? It says, the Lord God said, it is not good for the man to be alone. I'll make a helper suitable for him. It's not good to be alone. And that's why you cannot be an island to yourself. Man is human because of others. You are who you are because of other people. You can never live without man. 
And so something is so interesting. When God gives one a position and he or she thinks that he's better than the other. We need each other as a people. We need each other as blacks and whites. We need each other, male and female. And that is the type of relationship God has put us. So examples of these three primary relationships, we see the spiritual, we see the trinity, we see the church, and also we see Satan. In the physical, we see our bodies, animals, the earth, and even time. When it comes to the social, we have the private relationship with our families, our neighbors, and even our government. Now, this is so important. That the definition of these primary relationships can be seen as social relationship, for example, the interaction with other people. The spiritual relationships can be seen also the interaction with God and the spiritual world. The physical relationships is the interaction with the material creation. Now, our responsibilities and roles in these relationships are so important. God put us in relationship with his creation for a purpose. In the spiritual area, we could show the responsibility to abide in Christ. That is our spiritual responsibility. Without him, we can do nothing. So that's our responsibility to continuously abide in him. In the social area, we could highlight a husband, father's stewardship responsibility of loving and caring for his family. Now that is our responsibility in the social, an example of our responsibility in the social relationships. In the physical area, we could show our responsibility to care for the cleanliness of our environment. That is so critical because we have that responsibility. It's unfortunate some people think their responsibility is only spiritual. But God put us in this relationship for a purpose. To care and clean our environment. It's our responsibility to work also. And our responsibility to take care of the land. And to take care of the environment. Now these are our responsibilities as far as the physical area are concerned. Not only did God make us an all creation, but he put us into three primary relationships as mentioned with himself, other people, and the rest of creation. At the fall, these relationships were all broken. We read Genesis 3, 12 to 19. We find the instructions, principles, and wisdom to heal our brokenness in the Bible. God revealed in this manual how in this discussion, how our individual lives and our communities can be healed when broken and how we can flourish. Why would we not want to live by our meekest, best wisdom? Let us clarify a point here. We said that at creation, God placed people in three primary relationships. The spiritual the physical, and the social relationships. These sound very much like the areas of Jesus' growth. As mentioned, what do we mean by primary? These are primary relationships because all other relationships that God has given people are based on these three. They are the most fundamental of all our relationships. And so we see the quill of wisdom. We see the quill of wisdom. Where we see the physical, the social, and the spiritual. Which of the four areas of Jesus' growth are missing from these three relationships? 
Here we see that one is missing. And that one which is missing is wisdom. What is wisdom? And what is its association with the primary relationships of social, physical, and spiritual? How is obedience related to wisdom? And what are the observable characteristics of wisdom in our lives? When we read Psalm 101 verse 10, wisdom is the fear of the Lord. And so if you don't have the fear of God in you, then you may have human wisdom but not God's wisdom. You may have some aspect of it, but not the total. Proverbs 2, 5 says, wisdom is the knowledge of God. And so if you have it, you see God's mind in every area of life. First Corinthians 1, 23-24, Christ is the wisdom of God. That's what I'm saying. That you see, the mystery of God is hidden in Christ. That's why we cannot just be deceived by saying that it's only particular people who have some knowledge that we cannot know. If you have Christ in you, you have the wisdom of God right in you. You can't mess up. James 3, 13 to 17 says, Wisdom is seen in the life of a believer as humility and purity peace loving considerate submissive full of mercy good fruits impartial and sincerity this is how we see wisdom in our lives where does wisdom come from and why is it important to acquire wisdom Psalm 109 says, from meditation and obedience, as we meditate on the word of God, and obey. This wisdom gives insight into every area of life. You see, we have been created not to mess up, as people are messing up in their lives, creating pain, calamity, death for themselves. Proverbs 2 verse 6 says, Wisdom comes from the mouth of the Lord. So as we read the word of God and take time to meditate, you see we acquire wisdom from the Lord. 2 Timothy 3.16 is from scripture. All scripture is inspired. So we know it from him. And 1 Corinthians 2 6 to 7, 12 and 13 says, mature believers, it mature believers and God's spirit. So, you see, becoming a Christian is one thing. But applying the wisdom of God to your life, for you to be more like Christ in every area of life, becomes very critical. And that cannot be left in the hands of the church leader like pastors, priests, bishops, pope, or apostles. No. We are, as Christians, we are to be lovers of Jesus Christ. And if you love him, you want to always read from him. You want to hear from him. And don't forget, it's a Christ in you. Wisdom is a living out God's instructions that leads us to abundant life that God has intended for us to live. The shalom of God's abundant life. The shalom of God's abundant life. John 10 verse 10 where we see flourishing overflowing life immeasurably more than we can ask or think. Plans for good and not for harm. To give you a future and a hope. At Jeremiah 29, 11 to 13.
tells us what is the value of wisdom or what does wisdom give what is the requirement for receiving these benefits proverbs 2 says discernment and protection from wickedness that's what it does discernment and protection from wickedness you cannot be part of it no we should grow part that's why we talk about growth you should discern how can you discern if you don't know the word of god sometimes we think we have the spirit of god because we speak in tongues but you don't have wisdom stupidity pettiness becomes your portion so sometimes you imagine things that you should not do involve your serving they are the very things you can say that yes the body but then as you grow it's a process you mature in this Proverbs 3 says it prolongs it brings out prolonged life and prosperity that's what wisdom does Proverbs 4 says it guard it gives you guidance and watch over you Colossians 1 the wisdom of God bring fruitful work and knowledge of God Deuteronomy 28 says all of you all you have will be blessed all all why because you know the precepts of God and you obey not just you claim it right you don't just pray it out as we pray, you obey. Deuteronomy 30 says that, you see, wisdom gives life and blessings. So you cannot be living under curses when you have Jesus. Curses come on us as we disobey the commands of God. If you have the wisdom of God, you will escape. You don't involve yourself because everyone is doing it. Everyone is corrupt, so you are also corrupt. Everyone is stealing, so you are stealing. Everyone is greedy, so you are also greedy. No, you are, you should grow past that. The blessings of wisdom are found by obedience to God's command and ways. And we have mentions of scriptures to back all this. This is just a glimpse of all that the abundant life will include. Flourishing, prospering, and brings about shalom. What is the connection between wisdom and the three primary relationships God gave us? So you can see the wheel of wisdom. See the physical, the social, the spiritual. It is the wisdom that brings the balance for you to move towards God's intentions. So you may have the physical, you may have the social, you may have the spiritual, but without the wisdom, you see, you can't move towards God's intentions. Now what is wrong with this other picture that you are seeing? You will see that you don't have the balance here. You will see that we have some places being good and other places being crooked. And so we can't see a balance in these three, these three pictures that we are seeing right now. And so it becomes so important for us to look at it. what is wrong with this. What is wrong with this? And it is so important for us to look at it. What happens when the three spokes are strong and the rim is weak? What is the effect on the wheel when one spoke is weak or broken 
or missing. What happens to a whole movement when its rim is damaged or missing? So there's a problem. And that problem is that there's something wrong with the spokes. Something is not where. Something has gone wrong. And that's why we need to have the balance. We need to have a balance. The rim must be balanced. And that is the only way it can balance is wisdom. You have to have your wisdom applied not in one area but in every area of life in order to bring about the wisdom. The rim is wisdom. The three spokes are the three relationships and the hub represent that Christ is at the center of our lives. The wheel is very hard to use if it lacks a rim or has missing weak or broken spokes. In these cases, it does not move forward well. All areas of our lives need to believe in the awareness that God has given us his loving revelation for life and that he observes us as we live. We need to seek to live in the center of God's wisdom, moving steadily toward his complete intentions for us and those we serve. If we know and obey the wisdom of God, his instructions, intentions, and desire for our physical, spiritual, and social relationships, we can grow as he intends. The Latin term coram Deo means before the face of God. Living coram Deo means that every aspect of one's life is lived before God and for his glory. And that's why we've discussed the topic, our targets, our goal in ministry, in life, is his glory. When we obey the wisdom of God and live as God intends in every aspect of life, we are living Quram Deo. And that's why in Samaritan we use Quram Deo as our greetings. Quram Deo. We don't want to deceive ourselves. We don't want to think there's a middle ground. Once you are a Christian and Christ is in you, all life should be lived before his presence. As if he's watching you. When you are with your wife. When you are with your children. When you are in the classroom. When you are in the hospital. When you are in the marketplace. In your offices. In your profession. He's watching. We live our lives not in isolation. But our lives in total obedience. Because we live in his presence. Sometimes it's interesting the way some church people talk about his presence. Again, they project God's presence to be hidden somewhere. Very high, separated from us. That you need to go capture and bring it down. But you see, we are talking of the Christ who is not hidden. The Christ who has been revealed to us. The Christ that lives in us. We cannot escape, but to continuously live in his presence. Wisdom and this relationship, when you read 1 Peter 2, 6 to 9, say that we should humble ourselves, cast your cares on God, be self-controlled, and elect, resist the devil, and stand firm. You see wisdom in this area of Proverbs 3, 5 to 6. Trust the Lord in everything 
and acknowledge him in everything. Look at the use of the word everything. Other wisdom like fear God and not angels. Like here in Africa where people fear witches, demons, ancestors, ancestral spirits, powers, evil. And that is the worldview of the people. If you have the wisdom of God, you fear God. You fear God. And not angels, not witches, not demons. They come and angels, you don't fear them because even though they are messages of God, they come to do God's work. Satan has principalities and powers. But Jesus defeated them all. And we are to stand firm as Ephesians 6 tells us and put on God's armor. Our weapons and not flesh and blood. Second Corinthians 10. How can we apply wisdom to our spiritual relationships according to these verses? When we read Genesis 1, 26 to 30, and chapter 2, verse 8 and 15, some of which I've read, Romans 8, 18 to 20 also says, the sons of God, that's us, are to care for the creation and bring it out of its bondage to decay. This comes from our original mandate in Genesis to have dominion over creation and to manage or care for it. First Corinthians 6, 30 to 20 says, Do not submit to the physical bodies, passions, and sinful desires, but live by the Spirit. Remember that your physical body is God's temple and it is not your own. It is interesting the way people use their bodies. They think they are their bodies. They have, it is their own and they misuse it. And the many die so young. Many suffer the consequences. Don't forget. Someone created you and he made you so special. And as far as you disobey and misuse your bodies, whatever you sow, surely you reap. How can we apply wisdom to our relationship with the physical world according to these verses? Now, when we read 1 Peter 3, 8 and 9, it says, live in harmony with one another. Bless those who insult or treat you poorly. Yes, people think maybe they have the power, the authority to do all the evil by living harmony with them. Judgment is of the Lord. And at the right time, you'll be vindicated. The one who fights our battles is the Lord. And that's what our presence is. The battle is the Lord's. First Thessalonians 4, 11 to 12 says, lead productive lives. Work to supply needs. Win outsiders' respect. Why? In all of this, you know, we have one goal. His glory. We want to glorify him. Not man's, uh, you don't want to please men. Or just want a position or the praise of men. How can we apply wisdom to these social relationships also? And these are things we should think about as we apply to our lives. So the application, the application is my wheel. The wheel is the application. If you drew a wheel that represents your life, what will it look like? How is your wheel, your life? Because it is a life you are living. How is your wheel? Is it balanced? How is it? How is the rim of the wheel? Is the wheel moving forward or moving backward? Which part of your life and service need to be better developed or more balanced? Are you out of balance as we can see where some areas are good? But some areas are horrible. 
Maybe spiritually, you, you pray as never before. Why you don't talk to people? Your social life is terrible. Your relationship with your wife, your husband, the way you treat people, even women, people of other color, is horrible. And yes, you pray and pray and pray. You have a problem. You want to be like Jesus. Maybe your life. You check your other relationships. How about the environment? In Africa, we don't care much for the environment. But God cares. What can we do to keep our environment clean? Plant flowers where there are none. B- create beauty where there are none. It is our responsibility. That is why he put us into this relationship. So, in application, we see we have to look at the wisdom needs in my life. Where do I need wisdom? Where do I need to develop? Areas of development. Is it my personal life? Because if your personal life has problems, you can help others. If your relationship is so bad, as far as your social relationship, your physical relationship, your spiritual relationship is bad, how do you help others? And so, you check your life. And I've always said that, you see, Christianity is a serious business. Satan is devastating the world that our God created. And people think it's fine, it's okay. Where are the children of God? It's time for us to rise up and to take the responsibilities that our God has created us to uphold. We cannot pretend and it is time. So what specific plans and what step can you take soon to grow in one of your relationships. I've already informed you the three relationships. The physical, the spiritual, and the social. So check. What can you do? Who? When? And where? Choose one specific step you can take to grow and become better developed and or more balanced that can bring more balance in your relationships. Choose one. Because these lessons are not just for you to have knowledge or wisdom. But wisdom comes as you apply the principles to your day-to-day life. To make your life better. Your relationship with your family better. Relationship with your environment better. Relationship with your God better. That is the essence of the wisdom we are talking about. And God wants us to move into a balanced relationship where the spiritual, the physical, the social, the wisdom brings the balance for us to move towards God's intentions. And so you see, without the wisdom, it's difficult to bring the balance. If you can do that, then scripture will be fulfilled. As said in 2 Timothy 3.16, that all scripture is God bread and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness so that the man of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Beloved, we cannot fail. Whatever assignment God has given you, as a father, as a wife, as a parent, as a teacher, as an accountant, as a politician, as a legal person, you cannot fail God. That is why this teaching becomes so important. To thoroughly equip you so wherever God places you, you bring about his glory into that domain of life. It is not enough to seek him and know wisdom. Wisdom is to be obeyed. We must learn God's instructions with the intentions of obeying them and moving towards his purpose for our lives and service. All areas of our lives need to be lived in 
having the awareness that God has given us his loving relation, revelation for life and that he observes us as we live. Wisdom is to be lived. The New Testament book of James substantiates what we have been saying in the Old Testament about wisdom. Who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show it by his good life, by deeds done in the humility that comes from wisdom. But the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure, then peace, loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruits, impartial and sincere. That's what James 3, 13 to 7 and 17 tells us. Wisdom is of great value. However, if we neglect God's instructions, we bring distraction and imbalance to our spiritual, physical, and social relationships. Deuteronomy 30, 15 and 16 further explains the agency of heeding God's instructions. And he says, See, I set before you today life and prosperity, death and destruction. For I command you today to love the Lord your God, to walk in his ways, and to keep his commands, decrees, and laws. Then you will live and increase, and the Lord your God will bless you in the land you are entering to possess. Jesus did so, and we should also. Wisdom is to be sought after like precious stones when we walk in his ways and keep his command says the wisdom literature in our bible it brings us life prosperity and blessing many of the wisdom saying in scripture show us how to grow in honesty justice diligence self-control righteousness humility community and charity yes we should seek to know and live according to this wisdom. The source of all wisdom is God. He made us and he knows how life works best. His wisdom should influence our actions, associations, interactions, and decisions. A compelling call for seeking wisdom can be seen in Proverbs 4, 5 to 7. Get wisdom get understanding do not forget my words or swear from them do not forsake wisdom and she will protect you love her and she will watch over you wisdom is supreme therefore get wisdom though it costs all you have get understanding jesus is our example and so john 13 15 says he says I have set you an example that you should do as I have done. Christ is the wisdom of God. And he has set us all the example that we should do as he has done for us. And I think that's one of the reasons why he came here. He came to show us how to live the heavenly life on earth. And John 13, 17 says, Now that you know these things, you'll be blessed if you do them. We can't pretend. There's no middle ground. You are either for him. Get his wisdom. And let's prevail and take our positions, territories, and extend his kingdom. Make it, and make his will to be done on earth. As it is in heaven. Till next Saturday. I wish you all the best. But don't forget. That if the church. Fails to disciple the nations. The nations. Will disciple the church. Thank you so much. God bless you. And let's meet on Saturday. Bye bye.